planetary domination of London, New York, Washington, over the rest of the world. It's hard to get people to join that or think they have a part in it if you call it the Anglo-American world empire. If you call it the New World Order, then people in India or someplace like that or the European Union might think, well, there's something in that for us too. But that's not what it is. It's the Anglo-American New World Order. It's really the old world order. It's the British Empire morphing into the American Empire. The U.S.-British world empire is, is what you're going to get. Combines of powerful men have always battled with each other over the levers of power. Gerald Salente is recognized as one of the world's foremost trends forecasters and as the founder of the Trends Research Institute. People that are knowledgeable know that the fight that this country has been waging since its inception is for the central bankers not to take over the country. And that's why people like Andrew Jackson were elected. And that's why people revere people like Thomas Jefferson and others. The takeover has happened, and it's a corporate takeover. Agents of the Bank of England attempted to assassinate President Andrew Jackson on multiple occasions because of his resistance against a private central bank being set up in the United States. And it was something that Abraham Lincoln warned. And this is, by the way, why I believe he was assassinated. This is the Lincoln quote. The money powers prey upon the nation in times of peace and conspire against it in times of adversity. It is more despotic than monarchy, more insolent than autocracy, more selfish than bureaucracy. I see in the near future a crisis approaching that unnerves me and causes me to tremble for the safety of my country. Corporations have been enthroned. An era of corruption will follow and the money power of the country will endeavor to prolong its reign by working upon the prejudices of the people until the wealth is aggregated in a few hands and the republic is destroyed. Wall Street has killed Main Street. So I know how unpopular it is to be seen as helping banks right now, especially when everyone is suffering in part from their bad decisions. I promise you, I get it. Up until about the Kennedy assassination and the beginning of the war in Vietnam, the United States is a very powerful engine for world progress. It's the assassinations, the Kennedy assassination, and the others in the 1960s, the beginning of the Vietnam War, and the beginning of the absolute domination of the Wall Street group over every other interest. Nobody else counts except the Wall Street money masters. That has now made the United States into uh, no longer a force for progress, but something very different, often a force for destruction in the world. The military industrial complex has taken over the country along with the Wall Street gang. If you look also at the people that Obama has put on his appointments list, it's all Wall Street. It's government of Wall Street, by Wall Street, and for Wall Street. There's nobody from heavy industry. There's nobody from the auto sector. Nobody from Silicon Valley. Nobody from big oil. Nobody from defense. No labor, no women, no retirees, no small business, nothing. It's pure Wall Street. The only people who have a voice in Obama's councils are Wall Street finance oligarchs. That's all there is. Nobody else counts for anything under Obama. It's the most extreme Wall Street administration we've ever had. Before his death, President Woodrow Wilson apologized to the public, regretting that he had been deceived by a group of international bankers and the country's financial system had fallen into their iron grip via the Federal Reserve Act of 1913. Whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. Dwight D. Eisenhower, he warned the people that the military-industrial complex was taking over the country. Only three years after leaving office, President Eisenhower's prophetic warning concerning the threat posed to our system of government by the military-industrial complex came to pass. President John F. Kennedy had enraged the entire elite network. Now, Kennedy was brought in as somebody who was expected to be a puppet. It was thought that his pro-Nazi father, Joseph P. Kennedy, the bootlegger, the speculator, would uh, guarantee that Kennedy would be obedient to the establishment. 
They thought that Kennedy was a sex maniac who could be manipulated through all of this, but it turned out that through his personal suffering, Kennedy had discovered a personal sense of himself which went beyond just being a puppet. And he began to think about things like economic recovery, world peace, having a space program, uh, making deals with uh, the Soviets, cutting the uh, Federal Reserve down to size, and a whole series of other things. Executive Order Number 11110 signed by President Kennedy, began the process of abolishing the private Federal Reserve. Kennedy was also pushing for real civil rights reform and had begun the process of pulling the troops out of Vietnam. The last time you had an actual president was uh, Kennedy. The oligarchs took swift and decisive action. When John Kennedy attempted to take the government back from the robber barons, he was brutally murdered. The message to future U.S. presidents and leaders across the world was clear. Do as you're told or die. John Fitzgerald Kennedy was the last true president of the United States. And until the globalists are removed from power, we will never have another real one. The other thing about the American presidency you've got to remember is that this is a puppet post. It's automatically going to be a puppet post. The idea that Obama is somebody who is going to come in and exercise real authority when he's obviously been chosen and given everything that he's got by these financiers. Presidents are now little more than corporate pitch men who take all the political heat while the controllers remain in the shadows, safe from public scrutiny. Hip-hop icon KRS-One is not just known for selling millions of albums. He has led a tireless crusade against youth violence and has been a strong voice for human rights. If they controlled it before, what do you, why don't, what makes you think they're not controlling it now? The country was on a verge of revolution. They threw a black man up. Now we like this. They give him the money. They give him the bundling. They give him vote fraud. They give him the media whores. They give him goons. They even have elected officials making threats to put people in jail if they criticize Obama in public. All of this is the mark of a puppet. Uh, and that means that he is a, a puppet, actually more of a puppet than anybody else, more of a puppet than Mrs. Clinton would have been, even more of a puppet than, than McCain. He's the maximum puppet that we've had certainly since, since Jimmy Carter. They put a black face on the New World Order, and now we all happy. KRS ain't buying it. In the real executive power structure, the president serves the military industrial complex, itself owned by the international bankers. If there's a revolution, the population just throws out the prime minister or president. The elite stays in power because the public is never aware of who the real enemy is. In Evian, France in 1991, standing before the Bilderberg Group, the apex of the world government power structure, David Rockefeller defined the New World Order as a system of world government serving the international banking elite. For decades, the banker-owned media would attack anyone who dared to warn the public that a dictatorial world government was being constructed right under their nose, and that national sovereignty was being deliberately destroyed. And now, after years of denial, the media and the elite themselves are proudly announcing that not only is world government real, but it is the answer to the financial crisis that they carefully engineered. Suddenly, the Wall Street Journal tells us that the North American Union is here and that getting rid of the dollar for a common currency with Canada and Mexico is good. 